So we're going to do some balance practice today. So if you've got a chair that you want to use, either a folding chair or a kitchen chair or any sturdy little chair, you can get that out. And we will be doing things with straps next time. So if you've got a yoga strap or a belt or a tie or something, have that for next time. And for our relaxation today, if you have an extra yoga mat that's rolled up, we might use that. And I thought we would start sitting down to do a little form up because we're going to be doing some balance practices today that work your hips. So come on down into a seated position. You can come into a cross leg position initially. <clears throat> and we're creatures of habit, so switch your legs around. Get the other one in front or on top. And then ground your sitting bones to the mat. Lengthen up through your spine. Shoulders back and down. Ribs in and up, core active. And just take a moment there to situate, get your connection down into the mat and up through your spine. And then pulling your ribs back. You can have your hands on the floor or your knees. We're going to pull the ribs back and round the shoulders forward and tuck the chin for a forward bend. And then pull the chin forward and look up toward the ceiling. Lift your heart and bring those ribs forward for a backward bend. So just like we do in the standing process, we're going to do the forward bend, backward bend first. Inhaling as you come into that back bend, chest opening. Exhaling as you let that belly sink in and push the breath up and out. And just a couple times to get that spine getting warmed up. And then coming back to your seated position, bring one hand down, the other arm out, palm toward the ceiling over your shoulder, and slide over to the side as far as you want to go. So you can keep that arm straight and long and just keep stretching through that side of your body. Keep the hip that you're leaning away from down so that you're getting a good stretch all the way through the hip. And if you want, you can bend your elbow down to the floor and come a little deeper into that side stretch if that's something you'd like to do. And then inhale, sliding up. Exhale, the arm down. And keeping that arm down, opposite arm out, palm toward the ceiling, over your shoulder, slide to the opposite side. And again, the hip you're leaning away from stays down. That arm stretches out along with your head. The arm slides as far as it wants or bends for that extra stretch. So keep lengthening, keep breathing, keep the hips, sitting bones both down. And then sliding back up. Exhale and release. And again, as you come into your seated position, take one hand to the opposite knee, other arm out. Stretch your spine apart for our twist and exhale, following that hand around behind you. Bring it close to you on the mat. Stretch up through the spine from the sitting bones and exhale into your twist. Hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turns, not just your neck. If you love the twist, you can push a little with your hands to leverage into it, or you can just be gentle. And then bring the hand behind you up and follow it back around to the center and release. And switch your legs and we'll twist the other way. So hand to that opposite knee, other arm out in front, stretch from the sitting bones through the crown, and exhale into your twist. Hand to the mat, <clears throat> stretch up through your spine, exhale, and move into your twist. And again, maximize or minimize. It's your body, personal practice. Do what's right for your spine in this twist. And then bring your hand back up, follow it around to the center, and release. And then lifting your knees. Bring the legs out in front into staff position. <clears throat> Kneecaps are up, toes are up toward the ceiling, and everything is aligned. Hips, 
knees, ankles. Hips, shoulders are also aligned. It's just like mountain pose, but bent in the middle. Crown toward the ceiling, ribs in and up, core supporting you, and shoulders relaxing down. So just feel that position. Now, when you're in a seated position like this, if you feel like your hips are tight, you can put a blanket behind you or a pad behind you and just sit on the edge of it so you're sitting down tip forward. That gives you a little bit more pelvic opening. So we're going to bend one knee and bring the foot up onto your opposite thigh and let that knee come down toward the floor. So if this is tight this morning for you, you can take this leg that's extended in front over to the side, keeping the knee and toes up and letting that knee come down. That gives you a little bit more pelvic opening in your seated position so that knee often comes down a little bit further toward the floor. So just go ahead and make sure the knee and toes on that extended leg stay up. You can add your hand, just wait, you don't have to push on the knee. And that will give a little bit more loosening through the hip as you're breathing and relaxing. And remember, big muscles need you to relax more so that they're not tensing and tightening. And then to release the hip rotator, that outside of your hip, we're going to either hold on to the foot and the knee or wrap your arms around and pull it in a little bit more and move back and forth. So the closer that arm leg comes to your body, the more intense you'll feel it in the hip joints at the rotator on the outside. And the same thing is true as it gets warmed up. If you feel like you want a little more intensity, you can lift it higher. And that again makes it a little bit more intense in that workout. So just relax whatever you're doing. Make sure your sitting bones are both connected evenly, crown to the ceiling. And then exhaling, release that arm, no, that leg back out to the front. So feel the difference between the two legs. So what we need to do, of course, is balance the body and do the other side. So bring that other foot up onto your thigh, knee coming toward the floor. Again, feel free to move this other leg, but keep the knee and toes extending up in line with your hip. Otherwise, just get that padding underneath for that pelvic tilt coming into the front of your sitting bones a little bit more for a little bit more pelvic opening. And then again, if you want, you can have your hand there or even a little weight, like a book or a sandbag or a pillow or something that they often use in yoga classes. And that just gives a little bit more not pressure so much as incentive for your leg to stretch out a little bit more and gently. So you can do these multitasking watching TV. When you sit on the floor and you do a little yoga, you can feel like you're accomplishing something even if you're watching a TV show. And again, as that knee gets closer to the floor, just keep relaxing it. When you're ready to work the rotator, pick that leg up into your hands or wrapping around and pulling it in closer if you like it a little bit more intense as you move that hip back and forth. Take a few moments just breathing and relaxing, getting that hip moving and that synovial fluid warming up in the hip joint. And if you like it more intense, then you can lift it higher and bring it closer. Your choice. Keep your spine straight, keep sitting bones connected. And then releasing that, bring it back out again into staff position. Take a moment to feel your hips, your pelvis, a little bit more energy flowing there. And then bring your feet together into butterfly. Knees out toward the sides. You can take your index and middle fingers around your big toe and hold them with your thumb. Kind of move back and forth on the sitting bones to even things out. And again, the more you come into the front of the sitting bones, the more you'll get that stretch opening through the inner thigh. And then take one hand behind you and then the other, close to your body on the mat or the floor, 
and just a little gentle pressure into the hands and that releases some of that inner abdominal and hip flexor area so that those knees maybe can come down a little bit further toward the floor. Think about the bottoms of the feet rotating up toward the ceiling. That helps somehow with the hip and knee and ankle alignment while you're in this position. I don't understand it, but that's what they say. And then releasing that, bring your hands back to the front. Slide your feet a little bit forward. Bring your hands under, hands on top of your feet. And then bring your chest and chin toward your knees as you bring your knees down toward the floor. And just lengthen through your spine, keeping it as straight as you can. And then release your hands and sit back up, lifting your knees and bringing them back again to staff position. So just kind of feel the circulation through your lower body a little bit more. And then we're going to go into child's pose for a brief moment. So sink your hips back onto your heel, forehead down, hands next to your sides. Just relax a moment. Stretch your spine. Release your hips. A little forward bend. And then bring your arms out in front along the mat, straight in front of your shoulders. Push them way out in front of you. Plant your palms and pivot up onto your hands and knees. Knees under your hips, hands a little bit in front of your shoulders rather than underneath. So we're not in table position, we're in an extended position. Then come up onto your fingertips. Press your whole fingers, knuckles, base of the fingers, palm, and heel of the palm down and get really connected into those hands. And then sink your hips back toward your heels and tuck your toes under. We're going to go up into down dog. So in order to get up into down dog, <clears throat> we're going to just press into the hands and lift the knees just off the floor and move back into the base of your toes and your feet, not the toes themselves. And then keeping your arms next to your ears, push your hips straight up to the ceiling, straightening your legs, and then drop your heels toward the floor. So the heels should be coming down, but they don't need to get to the floor. The feet are hip width apart, so ankles, knees, and hips are lined up. Sitting bones are reaching way, way up to the ceiling. Your shoulder blades are reaching toward your sitting bones as well, and the crown is reaching toward your hands. So everything should be in a straight line from your wrists through your elbows and shoulders and hips. And then from your hips down through your knees and ankles. So maximize that. Think about pulling your bottom ribs toward your thighs. And just keep maximizing that stretch out through the crown and down through the heels and out through the sitting bones. And then walking your hands toward your feet, come into Ragdoll. And just slowly lift your ribs, sitting bones down, or work your way all the way up to standing. And come into Mountain Pose. So as you get into Mountain Pose, get your feet hip width apart, straight ahead, everything aligned, ribs in and up to support you. And we're going to be doing a balance pose called Eagle Pose. It's a little bit challenging. So if you want to use your chair, you can do that. You can start with the chair on either side. But if you know which is your easier balance foot, you can start with your easier balance foot. So get that foot situated next to your chair. Align it so that the outside of your foot is parallel to the chair. That means you're rotating your whole leg kind of inward so that the ankle, knee, and hip are lined up and they'll support you with that bone area rather than making your muscles work hard. And then align shoulders over your hips, crown to the ceiling. And we're going to just do a basic balance warm up first to make sure we're in a good balance place today. So get the base of your toes all the way across. Connected, the heel on the inside and outside connected, the arch lifting so that whole bottom of your foot is connected. Ribs in and up so that your 
core is supporting your spine, shoulders relax. You can keep your hand on the chair or not, your choice. And then just bring the other foot up a little or more or pull it in toward your heart. So as you're in this position, when you get to whatever position you want to be in, and if you need to step out, just step back in. That's perfectly okay. And then whether your foot is down or up, we're going to circle the ankle. So get the ankle moving around. Get it going the opposite direction. Point and flex a couple of times, getting that whole ankle area working. And then release that leg and move the chair if you're using it to the opposite side. So again, get things parallel with that foot. Get the base of the foot and heel connected evenly. Ankle, knee, and hip lined up along with your shoulder. Core active, supporting your back. Shoulders relax and crown reaching up. And again, as you sink into that foot, you can have your hand on the chair if you need a little stability. You can keep the foot near the floor or wherever it feels comfortable for you. And again, work your ankle one way, circle it the other way. <clears throat> oh, allergies today, sorry. And again, point and flex. And then release it. And then we're going to just do a little warm-up for the shoulders also. <clears throat> so if you have your chair, you can just put your hands on the chair and push your sitting bones back and move your feet till the hips and ankles line up. Otherwise, you can do it on the wall with your hands above your head. And again, hips right above your ankles and chest coming down. So you want your arms by your ears and just letting that shoulder area get a good workout. So you're pushing the sitting bones, hips back, ribs up, supporting the abdominal area and the low back and the chest coming down with your arms by your ears. And just sink through those shoulders. We're going to do a little bit of shoulder work in this next balance practice. And then whether you're on the wall or on the chair, bend your knees a little bit, tuck your chin in, and just walk in until you are upright again. So we're going to practice the shoulder part first. So standing in mountain pose, we're going to bring one arm out in front, right in front of your shoulder, and bend the hand up. So the palm is facing in, and then thumb is toward your nose. Take the other arm out at shoulder level with the palm down and then swing it under and see if you can wrap your hands around till the palms or fingers come toward each other. And then pull your elbows down and in. Relax through the shoulders, shoulder blades down, sitting bones down, and then push your elbows out and bring your arms up a little bit more. And then release. And then we'll do the same thing with the other side. So bring one arm out, <coughs> opposite arm out in front. Bend the elbow, palm in. Other arm out to the side. And sling it under. Wrap those arms as much as you can. See if you can get the palms together. You can have the hands back to back if that's the only thing working for you this morning. So a lot of work through that shoulder area, a lot of stretch through that shoulder area. Pull the elbows down and in and relax. Shoulder blades toward your waist. And then as it relaxes, push your elbows out and let those hands come up a little bit more. Thumbs facing toward your body. And again, relax and unwind. Circulation through your shoulders, through your upper body. Now, for the balance part, we're going to slightly bend the knees, bringing the sitting bones down, <clears throat> and get the grounded foot next to the chair. You can be holding onto the chair if you need to. Into the base of the toes, all the way across, and the heel. And then keeping that knee bent slightly forward of the ankle, but between the ankle and the toes, we're going to lift the other leg and bring it 
over. So you can keep that foot next to the other one with the toes down, which will give you a little bit more support. Keep the hips open to the front, shoulders facing forward as well. If you can, you can wrap those toes behind your calf. So a little bit more intensity through the hips and legs in that case. And you can just bring your hands to prayer position. And then inhaling, stand up and release and feel grounded. And again, if you're using your chair for a little bit of stability, you can move it to the opposite side. Again, line up with the chair, sink down, a little bend to the knee between the ankle and the toes, spread out through the toes, get the base of the toes connected, lift that opposite leg, bring it over, and again, Sink the toes toward the floor for a little stability. Hold on to your chair if you need to. Hips open to the front and shoulders open to the front. Wrap your toes behind if that works for your body in your eagle legs. And then unwind and stand back up. So feel a little bit more stability. Again, if you're moving the chair, do it on the other side. So we're gonna put it together this time. It's a little more complex, of course. So be prepared for a little bit more instability. So do use the chair if you prefer. Get the foot lined up, get your body lined up, get prepared with that abdominal support. Sink your knees just gently, knee toward the toes, between your toes and heel with that knee. Again, sink into it, bring the leg up and over, toes to the floor for a little more stability or wrapped if you want to for a little more intensity in the hips. And then we're going to take the opposite arm from the leg that's on top out, bend the elbow, bring the other arm out, fling it around, get your hands together if you can, jump full out like I am and breathe. So if you need to step out, just redo it in order. Relax those elbows in and then out and up. And then sink the hips back a little bit more and you're an eagle. Flying away, releasing back into mountain pose. Take a moment, feel your body. If you're using the chair, again, to the other side. So obviously you can't do the arm wrapping if you're holding on to the chair, that's okay. If you are holding on to the chair and you wanna go just a little bit into the balance, you can do the hands to your heart. So final side, last balance for the morning. Get your foot stable, spreading your toes, getting connected. Again, bend the knee toward the toes, not beyond. Find your position, sinking sitting bones toward the floor, ribs in, core active. Bring the leg up and over, wrapping it or to the floor for a little more stability. Hips, shoulders facing the front. Bring that opposite arm straight out. Bend the elbow, other arm at shoulder level, and wrap it around. Pull the elbows in and release the tension in your shoulders out and up as far as it wants to go. And then maybe sitting back, sitting bones back a little bit more, coming into that full crunched forward eagle. And fly away when you've had enough. So challenging balance, feel your energy, notice how that Body is activated, especially through that hip and pelvic area. And if you've been using your chair, we're done with it for the day. So go ahead back into mountain pose. Stack your body, just relaxing. And then stretch up. Exhale, pivot forward, swan dive. So arms out at shoulder level, back as flat as you can. Get parallel to the floor if you can with your back still straight, arms still straight out. And then drop down into ragdoll. 
Sitting bones lift, tuck in the chin, come deeper into that forward bend if you want. Pull your hands behind you, pull your whole body towards your legs. And then release, arms to the front, and straightening, knees straight, arms out at shoulder level, not behind you, we're not airplanes, we're doing the straight arms out to the side version. And sitting bones back, crown forward, get the back flat. See if you can be parallel to the floor, stretch it out. And then pivoting up, keep those arms at shoulder level. See how you did. And then reach to the ceiling and hands to your heart. And then arms coming up, exhale, pivoting forward. And again, coming to the floor into child's pose. So hips to your heels, hands, palms up, forehead to the floor, relax your shoulders, and just breathe. So take a few moments, get situated into your connection with the mat, with the surface beneath you, supported by the earth. And then inhaling, we're going to sit up and come into, again, staff position. So sitting bones connect, spine stacks for support, heels out, toes pulling back, getting that bottom of the foot area pressing away evenly, knees and toes toward the ceiling. So relax your shoulders, pull your ribs in and up for support, and we're going to do a seated twist. So pull your one leg in, hug the knee in, and then put the foot outside the knee or the thigh of the other leg. And again, pull that knee in as close as it's comfortable for you. Keep your sitting bones both evenly connected. Stretch up through the spine, shoulders relaxing down. And then we're gonna take the opposite arm from the bent knee and bring it to the outside of that knee. So pull the knee and forearm into each other. You can have the other hand on the floor as you get that situated. You can keep the fingertips down toward the floor or you can bend them up to the ceiling. That's the official position. So you want to keep that knee pulling in toward you and toward the center and then bring the other arm out, shoulder level, and follow it around into your twist. So bring that hand around behind you as far as it wants to go. You can put it on the floor close to your body or you can wrap it all the way around to your opposite hip. So sitting bones connect, spine lengthens. Exhaling, you wanna press the elbow, or upper arm into the knee, uh, into the thigh bone, and leverage maybe a little deeper into that twist as you choose. So hips, ribs, shoulder, everything turns, not just your head. So maximize into your twist or minimize it if that's what your body needs and wants today. Take a breath, exhale and relax into it. And then bring the hand behind you up, follow it back to the center and release your arms and your leg. So a little more hip work in that twist as well as that spinal energy from your twist. Sitting bones connect. Spine stacks for support. Take a breath. Just relax. And of course, we're going to balance the body. So bending that opposite knee, pull it in close to your body. Keep the sitting bones connected. Pull the arms around the knee and hug it in. And bring that foot over to the opposite side of your leg. So as far as your body wants to go into that position, see if you can keep the foot flat on the floor or parallel to your leg as much as you can. And again, sitting bones connect. We're gonna take that opposite arm over the knee and you can leverage with your hand on the floor to help you straighten up and get that arm and leg into each other. So keeping the fingers down toward the floor or bending your elbow hand to the ceiling. Opposite arm comes up to follow it around all the way into the twist. So your whole upper body turns, your sitting bones stay on the floor. So keep lengthening up through the spine. You want space for the bones to move into your twist. 
So you can, again, leverage the arm and leg into each other to help move deeper. You can breathe and exhale tension, which will release the spine ligaments and let you move deeper if you love twists. Or you can just be gentle with yourself if you need to. Don't forget that front leg. The knee and toes should stay up on that front leg. And again, moving into the twist only as deep as your body needs and wants. And then bringing that hand behind you up, follow it back around to the center, releasing your hands and your legs back into staff. And again, just close your eyes, lots of twist energy from that, as well as a little intensity through the hips from that particular twist. And then if you've got an extra mat, you may want to get it for our relaxation today. It's going to be a little bit different. So bringing your feet to the end of the mat, get your extra mat if you have it, and just put it right near your sitting bone and roll your upper body down so that you're along the mat with your arms and shoulders draped down toward the floor. And then you can keep your hands at about hip level away from your body and just a little bit more upper body opening for this relaxation this morning. If you don't have the extra mat, you can just do your regular corpse position. So take a few breaths and just settle into your position, whether you've got the mat or not. Just let your shoulders drape down toward the floor. Hands, palms up, keeping that upper body nice and open. Kind of Relax through the sitting bones, through the legs, through the hips. And let your spine just sink into that surface beneath you, either the mat or your regular mat, the rolled mat or the regular mat. And just let your body grow heavier as you breathe, sinking deeper into that surface beneath you, allowing your body just to Soften and deepen, heavy and relax, deep into that surface beneath you. And just let Mother Earth support you and allow your body to release from your mind. And know that other thoughts will come to you as you release the body from your thoughts. Let the content of those thoughts go as easily as your breath. Deep breathing, mind floating, body relaxing, deepening into that release. Now as your body relaxes more and more with each breath, and your mind floats more easily without attention to the content. Just allow your awareness to turn to the peace within. And let the peace fill your awareness. Fill your mind. Fill your body. Just being peace. And then, if you want to keep relaxing, just stay there. Keep relaxing as long as you want. If it's time for you to begin moving and releasing. If you're on the extra rolled mat, you can turn to the side and move the mat out from underneath you. And take a moment just to release and relax. And begin drawing energy and awareness back to the moment in your body, moving gently. When you're ready for your final yoga hug, press your back down, draw your heels in, and pull your knees toward your heart. 
Exhale and give yourself that good hug of appreciation for your yoga work today and the work your body does every day for you. And when you're ready to release, bring your feet down and knees to the side and sit back up. And as always, thanks for joining me this morning and I'll see you next time. I hope you have a pleasant day and a good week ahead. Thanks for joining me.